Hey everyone, welcome back to Dark Souls Daughters of Ash. Um, in the last episode we beat Bed of Chaos. As promised, I picked up my souls and I wore back. Which means we have a 100,000k to spend. Which I am going to spend. Yeah, endurance, I think. That's good enough. That is good enough. I think what we're gonna do is we will go to... It's gotta be Gwen's altar, right? Because we picked up the Dark Moon Seance Ring. So I'm gonna check out Gwendolyn. And once we checked out Gwendolyn, we can basically, I think, hit up the end game. Um, I can do more, but there really isn't actually that much more left from the game. So it's like. I'm content to finish it. Uh, this is probably going to be, most likely, going to be the last episode. Uh, unless something like really, really goes wrong. Uh, Gwendolyn, yeah, let's check this boss fight out. I'm assuming like there's not much you can do with this boss fight, I think. So I think this is going to be standard Gwendolyn. I haven't watched this cutscene in ages, so let's do it. Trespasseth, Trespasseth, fuck that's hard to say. This is the same voice actor that voiced uh, Lothric, right? Gwendolyn's a bitch too, like this dude is gonna get slain. Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, I thought so, again, like conceivably I wouldn't say there's much you can do with this boss fight. Oh fuck, that's a lot of damage. I mean, I was kind of expecting that. Listen, I have a shit ton of stamina. And... He ain't gonna be able to do jack shit. If you don't get him to do the... What? Okay, this is new. So we have two possibilities here. Uh, either he glitched out... Uh, or... That's something new. Maybe he has, he has like a crazy second phase where he turns into I don't know what. Fuck, this dude deals a lot of damage. It's kind of his thing, isn't it? Is he just gonna keep spamming that? Okay, yeah, like I said, you gotta get him on this uh, fucking arrow path, because then he dies. Upon the Cool. Soul of Gwendolyn, key to the sun chamber. Oh, shit. Wait, what the hell? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> what? Sealed by holy light. Okay, so we got the key to Gwendolyn's chamber then. Not Gwendolyn, Guinevere's chamber. Alright, we'll have a look. I am now interested in this. <laughs> what? <laughs> that, that looks so weird. It's like the fucking Star Wars... Um, in episode 1, which is funny because we talked about episode 1 or the prequels in yesterday's stream. Uh, it is... I saw it. Sun Chamber. Alright, let's have a look at this. Let's look at the boob lady. There is no boob lady. 
What? Boob lady is missing? Oh, it's like if I killed her. So wait, boob lady is not in this game at all because of this mod? That sucks. Okay, so it turns dark. As normal. What is this? Here? Oh, fuck. I just realized something. That I'm online. I haven't seen an Orlando dark in such a long time. I'll take a look around. Because all the, like, knights and shit disappear, right? What? Okay. There's a dark, there's a dark wraith here. What? There's a straight up dark wraith here. And he dropping chunks. Are you kidding me? Are the Dark Wraiths attacking An Orlando? Is that what's going on? I think that's what's going on. Oh shit, there's an event. Hold on, this is pretty cool. They're battling with the Silver Knights and shit. Okay. Okay, this is cool. I gotta admit. And are they non-hostile now? Did they, did they recognize my superiority? Yeah, they're non-hostile now. The Silver Knights. Okay, this is pretty awesome. Hope I'm not gonna get into trouble with the fact that I'm online. I don't think so. I, As in online in Steam, not online in the game. Uh... Oh, are they attacking the giant? Get away from my buddy. Did you even think about touching this giant? Fucking dark wraith. What up, giant? Voltaic bolts. We rescued him. Yeah. My giant body ain't going down. These are the bitches anyways. Bitches to this build. Okay. I gotta give it up. This is pretty awesome. This is pretty awesome. And it kind of makes sense from, you know, the lore perspective. I'm guessing it now unlocks the, the... Unlocks? I said it weird. I'm guessing it unlocked the light or whatever to Gwen's tomb, right? I'm just absolutely slaughtering these assholes. And that's kind of to be expected. Is this the right place? No, it's not. I gotta move this thing one level down. Okay, well, something is dead. I wish there were more. This is one thing, you know. Um, if we do get to the end today, I will give my thoughts on this mod. But this is the thing. I wish there were more events like this in the early Souls games. I mean, Dark Souls 2 was the first one to do it. Uh, to have an event, you know, like when you... Um, go into the giant memories and you technically have friendly, quote-unquote, NPCs. I wish more Souls games did it. Uh, because I think it's a pretty cool... Pretty cool mechanic.
All right. That that looks so jank. I think that's not it's it might be something wrong on my end. Uh because I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to look like that. This dude is a forsaken key. Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Forsaken key. Opens the cell in the West Asylum Wing. Key to the bleak, lonely cell in the West Wing of the Northern Undead. Which one is this? Forsaken key. Okay, we gotta go back. Holy shit, that's... Okay. Abyssal Prince. Oh shit! They put him in. They put the boy in. I don't believe it. I don't believe he's in the game. Do you know who this is? This dude is probably... I, th I think everybody knows. He's probably the most infamous piece of cut content in all of Souls. This dude was supposed to be on the uh, New Londo church rooftops. And he was cut. I cannot believe they put him in. Yeah, and it's really weird because he was in like a really advanced state of development. Like, you know, he had like movesets and everything. He's really easy. Okay. Yeah, this is not like... This is not like them that made the moveset. Like, this guy's model and shit were basically complete. He fights like Spawn from fucking Mortal Kombat 11. This dude is a bitch, though. He is. Unless he has like a... No, he does not. Soul of Jareel and Ashen Ring. Okay. I like didn't expect th this episode to go like this. I thought we were at the end of it. Uh, Ashen Ring. This is the... Ash Covered Ring recovered by Gwyn's nameless firstborn blah blah blah. The, the ring is called and powerless and heavy with old burden. Why would everyone want it now? I'm gonna want it. And we have sort of soul of Jeriel. I mean, this dude did not have a soul, obviously, because he's not in the game. Prince Jellier, heir to King Genzier and commander of the Dark Wraith of New Londo. Whispers of a secret romance between Jeriel and Guinevere plagued Lord Gwyn, even after the fall of New Londo. Okay, I'll use it. Give me that humanity. 23, holy shit. That is a lot of Hume. Listen, boys. I gotta go back to... First of all, we're gonna go back to Firelink Shrine because before I lose all of these souls, I mean humanities, which there is a high chance I will... I'm gonna... Uh, get this bonfire to plus 20 Estus. To 20 Estus, I mean. Oh shit. Is it darker here as well? It is. Kinda. Looks like it is. Should also upgrade my glove. Look, game looks weird like this. Um, not gonna lie. Don't know why I'm doing this. I guess I have nothing to spend my souls on. Uh, we are going to Undead Asylum. I'm, ju I'm just trying to like figure out which cell this could possibly be. Because I have no idea. But we are going to take a look around. 
I mean, we've been in my old cell. Maybe they added some new one. Yes. Oh shit. That's cool. That's really cool. I always wondered why you couldn't open these. I mean, it would make sense, right? That you'd be able to. Oh, and by the way, if you are like wondering, yes, I am going to give my overall thoughts on this mod once we are done. I think I've mentioned this like a thousand times. Um, But yeah. And also, if you're around on my streams, by the way, if you want to see some Dark Souls to action. Shit. I didn't think these motherfuckers would be here as well. Speaking of endangering my 23 humanities. The prime example. I wasn't expecting that, honestly. Um. Oh, fuck. I do have my next game picked out, by the way. So don't worry about that. Just a short little inter... I'm, listen, I'm not spoiling anything. I spoke about it on Twitch. <coughs> Twitch.tv slash Mr. Sketchhead if you want to see me play... Dark Souls 2, base level, come join, streaming on Tuesday next week, um, but yeah, I do have my next game picked out, which is going to be Rayman 2, The Great Escape, which is, it's just a quick game, a childhood classic, I've wanted to play, oh fuck, oh, it contains Pursuers, I wonder if he changed the lore on Pursuers. The wheel feels envy. No, there isn't anything different. This is the only thing. The rest of these cells are broken, yeah. Alright, well that was interesting. I guess interesting. So yeah, Rayman 2, I've wanted to play the game on the channel for a long time now. And it's probably going to take like 4 or 5 episodes, I think, at most. Depending. Maybe a little bit more. But what I'm saying is like, it's a short game. It's a fun game. Uh, we'll get to play it. You know, I honestly, I wanted to play a game that I've been talking about on this channel for like three years now, ever since it came out, which is Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. How it's like the weird one. Uh, you know, if you were around on my streams back on YouTube, even on Twitch maybe, you probably remember me talking about Infinite Warfare and how it's like the weird bastard child of the Call of Duty franchise. And... Oh, fuck. Okay, that was a mistake. And I was like, you know what? Maybe now that it's on sale, probably during Steam sale, I'll get it. It's fucking not. Unbelievably, that game is like, what, three years old, I think? That was 2017's Call of Duty, right? It still fucking costs $60, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not having that. Because I really thought that would be like a fun game to play through and shit talk the entire way. But I'm not spending $60 to do that, that's for sure. Maybe one of these days, when it doesn't it actually go on sale. Oh, you can do this one by one. That's interesting. I 
I like that. You don't feel like left behind or something. Not left behind, but you know, it has, I guess, more of an impact. You permanently have the ability. Cool. Can this fucking power within wear off, please? I didn't remember that it lasts this long. This guy is gonna blow a load. Dialogue is unchanged, which fucking hell it lasts so long. Alright, boy. Can I like not have this on anymore? It's still going. <laughs> God damn, I'm gonna be power within forever. What does this do? Is it like dependent? Wait. Did you see that there was something there? Okay. Oh that was my thing wearing off. My power within. Alright, let's go. Final area. I probably missed a shit ton of stuff, but I, I don't care, honestly. Alright, what's gonna be the twist here? Is there gonna be a twist here? There are no black knights. There are no black knights in this entire fucking game. I don't think I don't think I've seen a single one. Like no cap. Yeah, there hasn't been a single black knight. Racist. This game cut all the black knights out. Unbelievable. Hmm. Am I just gonna be able to like march there? Soul of a chosen undead? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> what? He almost made it. Boosts all defenses. Soul of a chosen undead who was not the first and may not be the last. I'm not using that. The soul of my comrade, you know. Maybe I'll use the soul of my comrade. I don't give a shit. Hmm, that's really strange. The Black Knight situation, because uh, how do you get their weapons? Maybe it's like some special event that I didn't unlock. All right, it's Gwyn time. Let's do this. Is he gonna be different? I don't think so. Oh, he's gonna be not parryable, right? No, he is parryable. That would have been a real twist. I would have almost appreciated that. Okay, I'm on my parry game today, uh, I gotta admit. Yeah, I'm on my parry game. Sorry Gwyn, your crotch was getting destroyed. I mean it's Gwyn, Gwyn is Gwyn. Hmm. Let's do the bootlicker ending. That's the one for me, I think. Abandon the... F what, what do you mean, abandon the fire? I ain't abandoning shit. Link the fire and begin... Oh, wait, but then what happens if you go outside? Is it gonna let you go outside just normally? It is. Okay. 
I like that. So they introduced something like in Dark Souls 2 and 3 where you don't have to go to New Game Plus straight away. I appreciate that. Again, I'm feeling the bootlicker ending today. Uh, so that's what we're going to go for. That mask though. I'm glad I did the ending in this mask. I think I've seen this ending before. I have a feeling. And that, boys, was Dark Souls Daughters of Ash. Uh, the mod. Overall thoughts on this. I talked about this a little bit, but overall, I enjoyed this playthrough. But a lot of my enjoyment has to come down to the fact that I enjoyed Dark Souls 1 in general. And less to do with this mod. Honestly, the first... I don't know how many, like 10-15 episodes, I was really, really enthusiastic for this mod. I was super hyped, I thought they were making great changes, but the more I got into the game, the less kind of enthusiastic I became about what they were doing with this mod. And I'm just gonna say they, because I don't know if this was made by one guy, one girl, multiple guys, combination, so I'm just gonna say they. Uh, I really feel like that whoever made this mod really kind of was trying to force their playstyle and their interpretation of the game onto everyone else. What I mean by that is that your progression through the game feels limited. Aside from the fact that it still opens up and you can do the four bosses, the Lord Souls in any order, the initial part of the game feels a lot more restrictive, uh, a lot more like you only have one path to take. And that's kind of something that uh, this game specifically doesn't do. That's the type of shit that Dark Souls 3 does instead of this game. Uh, the other thing is the fucking lore. Uh, the lore rewrites are absolutely stupid. Nobody, like, the lore of this game did not need to be touched. And the main reason is, or like the main thing that really sticks out, is that the lore in this game reads like a fucking Game of Thrones novel, or something out of Elder Sc Scrolls, where everything is really detailed and explained with like fancy names and fancy words. That is the exact antithesis, antithesis, can't even speak at this point, of Dark Souls lore, where it really makes you and lets you draw your own conclusions instead of shoving the interpretation of the lore down your throat. Which kind of felt like what this dude was doing, or the maker of this mod, shoving their interpretation of the, of the lore down everybody's throat. Aside from that, the difficulty, yeah, this game is, or this mod is more challenging, but sometimes not for all the right reasons. Um, sometimes it feels like he just cut like a bunch of bonfires out and called it a day and sometimes just like added a shit ton of enemies. But that's one of the lesser kind of things I feel is wrong with this mod. I mean the change with the soul items is stupid, the lore and all that is not needed. However, I will say that uh, some of the changes made to the bosses and the fact that they introduced new bosses, uh, shows a lot of effort. Listen, I'm not denying that effort wasn't put into this mod. A shit, like you can clearly tell that the makers of this mod were very passionate about this game and that they put a shit ton of work into this. Again, it just kind of feels like uh, you're playing someone's interpretation of Dark Souls, which I guess is kind of what this is. But, again, the lore rewrites were pointless. That's really the main thing. Like, you saw that I was reading the lore in the first few episodes, and then I spent some time after one of the recordings just, like, reading through it, and I decided that this is bullshit. Like, listen, I, I don't want to read a fucking 
Game of Thrones novel, I just want to play Dark Souls. But again, I enjoyed my time. There were a couple of frustrations and frustrating sections. Other than that, this is still Dark Souls, so I still enjoyed uh, what I got. I like the changes, it definitely gave something different. And just for that fact alone, I think this was a fun experiment. I will eventually check out uh, the other mods to see what we get there and... Oh shit. Okay, fine, I'll check that out. Ring for making challenging covenants. Okay. Interesting. Anyways, I'll still check out the other mods, Cinders for Dark Souls 3 and Augur of Darkness for Dark Souls 2. The only reason I don't want to do that right now, I'm going to play some different games for now, is because I am playing Dark Souls 2 <coughs> over on Twitch. Oh shit, what the fuck was that? I pulled up some Steam menu. I'm playing Dark Souls 2 on Twitch. And I just got done playing Dark Souls 3, so I'm going to take a break. But I will check those out as well. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Hope you guys enjoyed Daughters of Ash. I think overall, it was still a fun playthrough. We had some good laughs, some good salty moments. And, you know, what else do you need? Followers of Kramel gain great salmon. Huh? Weird. Whatever. I'll wrap it up here. Thanks for watching and peace out. Goodbye.